Hi there guys, it's Mike from MCQ Bushcraft here and welcome to another video on the channel. I'm joined by a friend of mine in this video. This is Zed from Zed Outdoors. Hey guys. We've done quite a few videos together, mainly on Zed's channel, doing wild camping and bushcraft. And it's been about a year, hasn't it? It's been quite a while. Yeah, it's been ages. Yeah. So uh, we had a chat the other day, thought we'd come out for a wild camp. It's spring, the weather's been really nice, although typically now we're out, we're expecting rain. So next port of call is to get the tarps up and get the shelters set up so uh, we can have a comfortable camp. So we thought we'd bring you along with us. I hope you enjoy the video. So tarps up, looking good, nice and tall, so you can walk underneath it, tall enough for me anyway and Zed. Decided we're gonna sleep on the ground tonight. We were gonna be in our hammocks, but it's such a nice night and it's been dry for probably the last two weeks. So the ground is very dry when it would normally be really boggy here, as I've experienced and shown you in other videos. You can see how big this four x four tarp is. Really designed for group work, but it's fantastic if two of you are coming out, maybe three, four of you, and you just want to carry one tarp and distribute the kit between you. making people feel inadequate with my small sauna <laughs> compared to you. So it's, it's, a, it's a big saw, little saw scenario. Check that out. It's a great saw, isn't it? It's actually not really that big. This, this is the 330, 330 millimeters, so 33 centimeters. And what is that? It's a the silky... Zubat. Right. Yeah. And you were talking about this earlier on off camera. Um, yeah, amazing saw. And you were talking about, because of the curvature in it, it means oh, it's you don't have Yeah, to... the curvature is quite, Quite incredible really. I mean, I've used this saw for a while actually, but I've never had my own. I've always used it in a volunteering group, like doing hedge laying and coppicing. Right. And because they're quite expensive, I think you're looking at like 70 quid or 60, 65 pound for one of those. Right. And um, I never really justified spending the money and always used bow saws or stuck around with the little backhoe, which is okay for small stuff. But this thing is, um, incredibly good it's a pull saw japanese pull saw so it cuts on the pull stroke as you can see as it makes its way through but very very good saw i mean it outperforms my bow saw the only thing it doesn't outperform the bow saw on is the cost of replacement blades and right. the upkeep and if i had to replace the blade on this it would cost quite a lot of money i think it's sort of 40 pounds for a blade maybe more but yeah, I mean, this is hawthorn, it's quite a hard wood. The curve of the blade just literally makes it effortless. And it, and it sort of eliminates that downward force you have to right. try and place sometimes. Or you don't need to put too much on a normal saw, but it just does it all for you. It just goes through really thick logs very quickly. 
So uh, yeah, great saw, I'm really impressed with it. The only thing I would say is the sheath isn't very good because it stabs in the mud. Mm -hmm. uh, you can mount it in a, in a different way, I haven't done that yet, but. So essentially you'd wear it primarily when you're actually using it and then yeah, kind yeah. of like unmount it when you've kind of finished. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So me and Zed have been busy collecting some tinder. We've got cramp ball, some birch bark, and obviously some dry grass here, dry material that we can use as a nest. And I've done a fire lay of ash, got some hazel, a brace at the back, which is quite big because if we're gonna use the cramp ball and this nest material, which we are going to, you need a much bigger gap between the actual tinder bundle and the base of the raft because it's that much more prone to being smothered. So first things first, going to check inside the cramp ball and that's what you want to see. Really nice spacious material inside and that's really dry as well which is brilliant. The weather's been pretty good to us recently. Um, so with cramp balls they can be tricky to light. I usually chop mine up into pieces by putting my hand on top of the knife and just pushing down like that to avoid any accidents because they can be a bit firm. I'll break this up a bit more, do this down on the ground. There we are. We've got a bit of a breeze today which is, really helps this method of fire lighting. Once you get comfortable and you've got the fair rod in the right position, it's quite easy. If the, if the cramp ball is nice and dry and then you can transfer this across to a larger piece just to buy you some time. And there we've got it onto the larger piece. You can put that to one side facing the wind so the wind blows in and keeps the cramp ball lit for you. Same with that piece there. But this should be enough to get the tinder bundle going. If not, I'll just break another little piece off the inside of that. And then we'll put that in there like so, and that'll be, that'll be perfect. So we'll get the nest built. We'll re-crunch that, open it up. We've got our small sticks just there, ready to go. So we don't have to worry too much about that. Wind's coming this way now, swirling everywhere. So we turn this upside down, get the heat in there. So I just had to get the camera out of the way as we had a big plume of flames coming towards it. So just put the bundle down, twigs got straight on top, everything's nice and dry. You can see that it's going quite happily. And because of that brace at the back, we've got lots and lots of air being able to circulate around, be drawn in and we're not smothering it. If we pulled that brace out, everything drops down much closer initially and you'll have big, big problems with that. But we can take that brace out now and actually use it, put it on later. And in the meantime, we just get lots of slightly larger sticks on top of the fire now. 
uh, just so all those small twigs don't burn away for nothing and just leave us with some ashes. The evening's drawing to an end. We're getting some dinner on. I've got some chili and rice, and Zed's got something a little bit similar. And we're just going to have something to eat, get our bed rolls out, and enjoy the rest of the fire for the evening. We're losing daylight, but uh, we're going to get an early night, and we'll see you in the morning. Well, it's bright and early in the morning and it was quite a pleasant night but just looking at the fire here I thought I'd show you a little trick about getting the fire going in the morning. If you remove some of the ashes from the top and it's been a dry evening or dry night you should be able to find some embers still lit. Just blowing on the fire lightly usually reveals them. So we've got one just there it's still going. This large one here Still smoking. And it means you can get the fire going with these embers. Another trick is to use your ferrocerium rod on some of the charcoal that you've created. And a bit like char cloth that'll ignite really easily, especially if it's a nice soft wood. It's got a lot of space in it. But we'll put this ember in here. Turn that upside down like that. And I've got all these twigs here. Just get these on top, trying not to crush it. Just keep them a bit elevated at first so the heat can penetrate through them. And we'll just let the rest of the bundle ignite. So what we're hoping for is for that fuel wood to start burning. So for the bundle, once it's done its job, when the fuel wood's lit and the fire will be established, and you can see some of that fuel wood there is actually lit now, because you've got a nice consistent flame that's continuous in one area, not just fluttering, which is usually what it's like when the bundle's burning. And that's our fire for the morning done. We just need to top that up with thicker sticks. Well guys, camp's drawing to an end, we've packed our kit up and we're just waiting for the fire to burn down to ashes completely so we can get it cleared up and 
get the place looking like no one's been here. Uh, but Zed brought some hot cross buns with him this morning, didn't you? I did, yes. They were very nice. Burnt one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was it. Didn't have to do any cooking and I still burnt one. So. No, it was, they were good. I appreciate that. No worries. But uh, needless to say, you should check out Zed's channel if you're not aware of Zed. He does a tremendous amount of work here on YouTube. A lot of green woodworking, visiting people all around the country with various skills, basket weaving. Lots of natural crafts, which is mainly your thing, isn't it? It is, yeah. I've veered, veered more towards that, as well as wild camps and base camps, yeah. Yeah, you've got some cool videos coming up as well, base camp constructions and doing some things at the base camp, carving and all sorts of stuff. So it's worth checking out his channel. He does some really good work here on YouTube. And uh, if you're interested in seeing another version of this video, Zed's been filming here as well. So you can go over to his channel. I'll put a link in the description and you can check that out as well and see it from a different perspective. But uh, you can see him making me look like a total idiot. <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all, not I'm at sure all. I'm sure it'll be fine. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys. Really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you very soon in another video. Take care. Take care.